pull this way. One, two, three, two, three. Thank you for watching JSU Action News. I'm Kyle Holland. And I'm Myron Jones. Scott Elliott will be giving us the weather shortly. Quinn Lawson Sports. There's this minor change in the football that might make a huge impact. Also, Steph, Steph Curry and Cam Newton, the best friends, but one of the teams almost lost their undefeated streak. More on that coming up. This is JSU Action News. Aaron Perkins will be giving us an update on the BET Awards. In tonight's top story, CNN hosted the 2015 Republican debate. Justin Crawford has the story. The second GOP presidential debate took place today inside of the Reagan Presidential Library. The top Republican candidates talked about foreign affairs, illegal immigration, as well as Planned Parenthood. The Russians will begin to fly, fly combat missions in that region, not just targeting ISIS, but in order to prop up Assad. What we need to do is to secure our border, and we need to do it with more than just a wall. Governor okay. Bush? There are 13,000 uh, community-based organizations that provide health services to women. 13,000 in this country. I don't believe that Planned Parenthood should get a penny from the federal government. The big highlight of tonight's debate was Carly Ferrarino squaring off with Donald Trump in what appeared to be a grade school fight over who had better success out in the business world. In fact, today on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, they fired another 25 or 30,000 people saying we still haven't recovered from the catastrophe. When Carly says the revenues went up, that's because she bought Compaq, it was a terrible deal, and it really led to the destruction of the company. And you were forced to file for bankruptcy, not once, I never not for twice, bankruptcy. four times, a record four times. Why should we trust you Mr. to manage you the finances of this nation? I tell you. And forth and volleying back and forth about who did well and who did poorly. You're both successful people. Congratulations. Stop this childish back and forth between the two of you. Okay. I'm Justin Crawford with WTVC. Back to you in the studio. Medicaid patients in Alabama and in parts of Georgia will now benefit from the secure state-to-state -state connection by Alabama's One Health One Record and Georgia Health Information Network. One Health Record Director Paul Brannon says, ultimately, we will be able to reduce unnecessary health care costs, increase administrative e efficiencies, and improve outcomes. One Health Record was awarded a grant in 2009 by the Office of National Coordinator to help create a better way to exchange information between physicians, hospitals, and others. The Georgia Network currently has over 18 million patients. Paul Ryan became the 54th Speaker of the House on October 29th in a day of high political theater, a young new leader for a fractured Congress charged with healing Republican divides and quieting the chaos of Capitol Hill. Let's prove ourselves worthy, Ryan urged from the House dais where he was sworn into the job, third in line to the presidency after an extraordinary month of unrest for Congress. We are not settling scores, he declared. We are wiping the slate clean. As Ryan spoke, senators across the Capitol were preparing to cast votes on a broad two-year budget end deal that passed the House, engineered largely by outgoing Speaker John Boehner to allow Ryan a fresh start with the toughest issues resolved. After 13 years, a young man has been found. That story after the break. In 2002, a five-year-old boy went missing. 13 years later, he has been found. After applying for college, now 18-year-old Julian Hernandez is no longer a missing person. The social security number his father, 53-year-old Bobby Hernandez, had given him was a fake. Bobby Hernandez was arrested and charged with tampering with records. He's being held in Ohio on a $250,000 bond. Julian was unharmed and has been in contact with his mother, who lives in Alabama. <laughs> And now, Courtney Gorman with a story on gambling and sports. Fantasy sports is a game where participants assemble virtual teams of real players in professional sports. Most people use the game as a source of entertainment, <coughs> but when you add money to the situation, the game becomes a problem. DraftKings is a leading skill based daily fantasy sports gaming destination for fans to compete in online gaming for cash and prizes in a large variety of professional and collegiate sports. Uh, what I do like about DraftKings is I like that you can have the opportunity okay. to win money every single day. Instead of, like if you play fantasy football, you can only win like maybe like once a week. 
if it or you're or matter of fact, not even once a week. You have to win until like December or whenever the season is over. What I like about DraftKings is you get the opportunity to play sports without really playing sports, without the extra risk behind it. You know, I get to pick my teams, I get to get a chance to win based on my expertise in the sport. The officials in the state of Georgia are questioning if DraftKings can operate under the state tight restrictions on gambling. Georgia's constitution generally bans gambling except for lottery games, which are ran by the state. States with flexible gambling laws in Georgia also have questioned DraftKings. DraftKings argues that fantasy sports is more than gambling because the game is based on skills. This exempts DraftKings from the online gambling law, which is set in 2006. I feel like Georgia shouldn't take away. I don't think they should Which one fight this battle to? because Nevada tried it and then uh, many other states have tried it. I know California was one as well, gotcha. and they lost the battle. There always will be gambling in sports. It's just one of those things you got to kind of just <coughs> find a way to control and go from there. As you can tell, there are a lot of daily fantasy sports users in the state of Georgia. Does Georgia have a case against DraftKings, or are they just trying to find money for the state? This is Courtney Gorman, JSU News. And now, another look at the weather. Mostly cloudy day today. We'll take a look and see what the rest of the week should look like coming up next. day today. We'll take a look and see what the rest of the week looks like coming up next. Partly cloudy day today. We'll take a look and see what the rest of the week looks like coming up next. As you can see here from the SkyCam network up top of the Houston Cole Library, we had partly cloudy day today. We'll switch over and take a look at the other SkyCam. As you can see, the ladies, they look like they're getting ready to play a softball game underneath the clouds here. Let's see what we've got coming up. Today we had a high of 72 degrees, dew point of 59, humidity 64%, and the pressure at 29.85 and rising. Taking a look at the southeastern satellite view, you can see we've got clouds all across the southeast. We've got a cold front headed down and a low pressure system around uh, the Arklatex area. So we're going to stay cloudy today. It should push out tomorrow, get a little bit more sunshine. Taking a look out west, we can see why they've been having drought problems. The high pressure just sitting there, not moving. All the low pressures are going just north of there, causing the heat and uh, low humidity to be out west. Taking a look at our long range forecast, tomorrow we're looking for a high of 77. Sunday, warmer and 80, plenty of sunshine, but unfortunately coming up for the weekend, we've got a little bit of rain coming in with another cold front coming our way. And now we'll take it over to Quentin for tonight's sports. Thanks, Scott. In news today, a, a major change in the kickoff, and well, excuse me, in the field goals for extra points. The NFL made a rule change to move it from the two-yard line to the 15-yard line, which makes it now a 33-yard field goal. Now, we, usually the field goals were two, from the two-yard line. It was a 99.5% success rate. Now it's moving down to around 80 to 85 to 90%. So that makes a huge change in the points. That, you know, 24, more than 25% of the sports, I mean, more, more than 25% of football games are decided by five points or less. So this is a major, major rule change. In basketball, Steph Curry, once again, leads his team to a win over the Brooklyn Nets with a score of 114 to 98. Steph Curry had a game high 28 points with Klay Thompson having 21. But his fellow friend, his Carolinian, Cam Newton, had a difficult time overcoming the Saints. They had a late rally to score a touchdown with two minutes left in the game to win 41 to 38. Cam Newton also set a career high, which he also matched earlier this season with five touchdowns. Another thing to watch out in that game, what happened was, there was a blocked extra point, which also made the new rule change is that Stephon Anthony returned it all the way to the end zone to give the Saints a two-point conversion. So that's a new change as well as moving the extra point back. 
that's it for sports. We'll be back after this. Also with uh, Aaron Perkins giving us entertainment news. Oh, Jay, shoot, dang. <laughs> also, we have, also we have Justin Crawford with the up them upcoming uh, JSU. Oh, okay, dang, can't talk. Justin Crawford was on the scene when we for JSU's homecoming. The number one Jacksonville State Gamecocks returned home this up. weekend to celebrate homecoming after up. playing back-to-back -back conference games on the road. The Gamecocks hosted the 13th ranked Eastern Kentucky Colonials. Both teams entered the game unbeaten in the Ohio Valley Conference and played before a crowd of more than 21,000. The Gamecocks homecoming theme was Curse the Colonials, and at the end of four quarters it would appear the Colonials were cursed as the Gamecocks brought a 34-0 shutout. The Gamecocks beat the Clunnels in virtually every category, in first downs, passing and rushing yards, total offense, third and fourth down conversions, as well as time of possession. The Gamecock defense was led by Joel McCandless okay. with 10 Can tackles, Brandon Bender with 7 God. tackles, and Dawson Wells, who had 6 tackles and 1 interception God. that turned into a pick Show six. It. On the other side, the Gamecock offense was led by running back Jermaine Pope, wide receiver Josh Barge, and quarterback Eli Jenkins. Jermaine Pope had 14 rushes for 37 yards, including a touchdown. Wide receiver Josh Barge had nine receptions for 158 yards, including two touchdowns. Eli Jenkins completed 23 passes for 324 yards with two touchdowns and 18 yards rushing. For the first time in his Jacksonville State Ooh. career, Jenkins Ooh. passed Ooh. for more than 300 Barge. yards during a game. Jenkins is the first 300-yard passer for the Gamecocks since Marquise Ivory on November 3, 2012 against UT Martin. The surge of offensive and defensive power came from Coach John Gross's pregame speech. There are many seeds left this season for the Gamecocks, and hopefully one of them will lead to the FCS National Championship in Frisco, Texas. Back to you in the studio. Jay Shu went on to go 11-1 in the regular season. In the second round of the playoffs, they escaped a narrow defeat by beating Chattanooga 41-35 in overtime. Eli Jenkins and Tremaine Point went over 100, and Buster Pope also had 200 yards, 200 yards rushing. And the next, the next game for JSU is this Friday night at 7 o'clock against Charleston Southern. That's it for sports. After the break, Aaron Perkins will have an update on entertainment. Good morning. This is Aaron Perkins with Dr. McGrath's Class News. The 2015 BET Hip Hop Awards recently aired, and it was a star-studded event. It was hosted by none other than Snoop Doggy Dogg, a.k.a. Snoop Lion. The BET Hip Hop Awards had some standout performances. Dage Low. <laughs> Ray Sherman. T.I. and Young Dro were some just to name a few. Hey, talk to my agent, man. Y'all fucked up, man. Yeah, I'm an agent right The one thing that the BBC Hip Hop Awards is always known for is its cypher. And this year did not hold back when it came to freestyle. Some of the most memorable freestyles from this year were from Tink, Dougie Fresh, and Red Man himself. Take to bring the heat in the middle of December. I drop hits that your parents can remember. Lay low, but got my group back like Stella. Only artists you know rip a show a cappella. There were many winners from tonight. Some of the most notable were Drake for MVP of the year, Trap Queen for Track of the Year, and J. Cole for Album of the Year with Forest Hills Drive. The 2015 BET Hip Hop Awards was very memorable, and we're all looking forward to see what they do next year in 2016. Got this it. is Dan Perkins signing out from the BET Hip Hop Awards. Turn up. 
I had the pleasure of going and interviewing the director of the Bakai, the play that the JSU Drama Department will be putting on. The JSU Drama Department will be putting on the Bakai by Euripides, translated by Robert Woodruff. The Bakai will be directed by Caroline Price. We were able to talk with Ms. Price about what this play means to her. Well, it's an interesting story, and I'm anything but a Greek scholar. But what I love about this story is that idea that Dionysus represents that god of rock and roll, the god of wine, sex, fun, uh, right. hedonistic ways. And what's kind of cool about this version of the Bacchae, which has been okay. written by Euripides, but it's translated yeah. by a modern uh, playwright named Paul Woodruff. Basically, and he really seemed to capture that idea of, of what happens Thebes, when we think, deny that part of ourselves, when we deny Dionysus. what that god represents to With ourselves. So drink, this production is really so trying to explore what heart. happens when we compartmentalize or we repress uh, what the god Dionysus represents and Killing then, you know, having a good time. Have there been any difficulties in bringing this play to Jacksonville? The biggest challenge was casting the lead role. Uh, I think that was our biggest sort of hurdle when we first chose the show for the season. Um, and we were really lucky that Professor Michael Boynton uh, stepped in to play it, and he's doing an amazing job. And I've known Mike okay. for almost 10 years now. We got our MFA in acting together. So I knew that not only would he bring a level of talent that was pretty impressive, but he also would bring a level of professionalism. And it's kind of cool that the students get to see their professor up on stage with them and get to work with him. And he's been fantastic through the whole process. The Bakai is sure to bring a lot of excitement hey, to Jacksonville. Like to that, Those <laughs> wanting to see the show <laughs> should visit the JSU website for ticket and contact information. The show will be running from the 12th yeah, yeah. through 15th of November. For all of us here at Campus News, I'm Kyle Holland, signing out. And now our very own Scott Elliott has a story on one of America's favorite foods, bacon. A lot of things had to happen for this to fall into place. A lady at my wife's work had lost her earring and gave her her name and phone number to call if she was able to find it. My wife got lucky. She went outside and was able to find it. Uh, contacted the lady. She was overjoyous. Uh, my wife sent her earring back to her. And lo and behold, her name is Becky Young, owner of Young Motorsports in the NASCAR Truck Series. We were given passes for the garage and pits and able to see all the races throughout the whole weekend. We saw the Smithfield tent outside for the bacon uh, eating contest. Well, I entered in the contest. Saturday night, I got a text message saying, would you like to be in? Let us know within 20 minutes. I texted back. I was able to get into the contest. Let's eat. Go, go, go. You got five faster, minutes to put faster. down a half a pound of bacon. This is a competition. The winner gets to go to Homestead Miami Speedway and compete in the ultimate prize. The winner at Homestead Miami Speedway of all the champions is going to be an honorary crew member of ours at the 2016 Daytona 500. I won the contest. I ate 30 pieces of bacon in 2 minutes and 37 seconds. We are going to Miami the weekend before Thanksgiving, where I will compete against 15 other people throughout the country, and we get to meet Richard Petty one-on-one. -on -one. The big winner this year gets to go to Daytona in the spring of next year for the NASCAR finale weekend, and they also get an autographed fire suit from Richard Petty. That's what I'm going for. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a steely-eyed man with a plan, Scott Elliott! Woo! Scott, where did you qualify? What did you eat? Talladega, I ate bacon. Scott, you got your weapon? You got this. Three, two, one, let's go! Five minutes!
Field, Cole Hart Jones. He's going to Daytona, baby. That will do it for us tonight. Thank you for watching JSU Action News, and we will see you back here tomorrow. Night. <laughs> which uh, which camera so am I supposed small? to look at? Because <laughs> so I kind of noticed a little bit. It's like tomorrow.